I have so many little projects that have all converged and finished at once, I cannot wait to share them with you. Welcome back to The Nora Show. Let's first discuss this coat. Okay, the last time you saw the coat, it did not have any fur attached. And the more that I had been staring at it, because I've sort of put it on the mannequin, just slid it over to the corner of the living room for the past month, I realized that I really wanted a little bit more extra to this because having two capes is apparently not extra enough for me. So we have added a fake fur poofy thing. And I've got this sewn down to here. And what I'm going to do is tack, tack, tack along the edge here and the tacking right about here and here, right about at the neckline, and then let the, this part of the coat flip open and I will finish the tacking right about there. Let's see if I can show you what this is going to look like. in there. So that's what it's going to look like. I am extremely excited about that. I also finished extending the, um, the sleeves down and I am confirming with everyone right now that I did not, I did not fake it. I actually did finish this including all the way on the inside and this is silk lined, silk lined from all the way up through the sleeves to the back and everything. I am incredibly proud of this project. This is, this is so pretty and the camera is not doing it justice. This is such a dark black that I am having the worst time with lighting trying to show how luscious and rich this is. I've done my best. All right, so this project is going to be done within let's say 20 minutes of me just coming around and putting this on so you can consider this job finished. And here's the lovely purse that matches. And here's the lovely hat. This project is done. You've seen this one. This is the last episode. And the only thing that I need to do on this is uh, clip the threads and attach this to this corner so that this can close. I have a couple of markings. I need to do some spot cleaning already. I'm not sure. I think some of the velvet may have transferred over. I, I just need to, I need to clean some stuff up. This is what I made and don't really have a whole lot of footage for. Winter break got a little messy and I ended up doing some sewing without doing any actual filming. This is the result. This is a burgundy brown. It, depending on the lighting, sometimes it looks a little more red, sometimes it looks a little more brown. Today it looks more like a, uh, a brick red to me. I used my lace. We have lace in the front and the back. Somewhere in my footage, I do have me uh, cutting this out and I'm going to insert that somewhere in this video.
Let's take a closer look. And this is the back. And now let's take a look at the sides. I'm a little surprised with how well this came together. These are in fact hip gathers, which I have made fun of many, many times in previous video. I have to say that I am incredibly pleased with how this came together. I was very, very surprised. I ended up inserting this on the two flaps that come in and then flipping this in. Oh yeah, that works. Okay, flipping that in and then just sewing it down, which means that I didn't really do any gathers here, but this did provide a lovely lace strip that was all the way down. As you can see, I'm very happy with the interior construction. This is very, very nice. I also did not use a serger. I did French seams on the entire bit of this. So technically speaking, I'm actually thinking that this is done correctly for this time period. So this is the front again, and then it comes down into the hips. You can see how that folds in. All right, this is what I did. I took the flat lace and then I snipped out the corresponding angles that would look well on the top. This is one way that you could cut out your flat lace for a nice applique. And then for the front, I did more of a V. These are both coming off the same flat lace concept and that's that's one of the reasons why flat lace is the way it is so that you can actually cut out applique. There is no stretch on the arm shoulder things. <sighs> you all did not come here for accurate words. If you did, you're in the wrong place. Okay, Sh shoulder straps, shoulder straps, I remember now. Okay, these are the shoulder straps. And as my husband so inelegantly pointed out, wow, that's a lot of gaping right here. Yes, there is. There was no shaping on these at this time period. This is accurate to the time period. But this also flow falls exceptionally low. I'm going to do my best now to actually show you this on without thoroughly embarrassing myself. Okay, I'm going to wear what I'm wearing right now to show a contrast between the lines of, let's say, 1940s, 1950s, bullet bra and where that started and where the cups are for all of that versus let's say 1920s. The 1920s, straight up, they dropped everything as low as they could, mainly because otherwise you're not gonna be able to get this without any shoulder uh, underarm shaping to actually go underneath the underarms. So wherever you need that to land, that's your 1920s, I guess I'm gonna call it a bust line right now. So wherever your armpit ends and you can fit the material underneath it and it's not going to be jammed up underneath your armpit, that's your 1920s bust line uh, area of that's the line. So that's where you end up with this. I was also asked recently, when do I actually wear this? Specifically, this beautiful number. This is a dressing coat. We don't really have those nowadays. I mean, we have robes and they're usually exceptionally comfortable, but to get into anything frou-frou like this, it has a tendency not to be very well made and it has a tendency not to be uh, made in a way that you would wear it with purpose other than boudoir purposes. I can say this, this is silk. This is not some sort of sateen polyester or something, which means the second that I put this on, even though it is completely see-through, it is as light as ever, I am now exceptionally warm. 
exceptionally warm. This is weirdly warm. So, um, silk is my new favorite fabric to sew with simply because I like wearing it. Where am I going to wear this? Well, I can say this much. When I get up in the morning, I am very quickly rolling into making coffee and getting the kids to school, or I am, or I'm sleeping in like a smart human does when they have that opportunity. However, on the days that I'm actually doing my hair, my makeup, getting dressed, and really trying to do all of this, I usually don't put on my clothing immediately. I actually put on all of the undergarments and a slip and then I get ready and with all the hair and everything because otherwise it, it gets too hot with the lights and, and just the movement and everything and I don't want to get makeup on my clothing because powder has a tendency to go everywhere. So the idea behind this is that I get to have uh, something absolutely elegant and beautiful that I can put over my slip in the morning when I'm getting ready for the rest of the day. Not that it's always in the morning. Sometimes it's in the afternoon. Anyway, okay, so this is what I've got. So the plan for my day is this. I am going to attach a little ribbon right here and right here so that I can gently tie that closed. And then I'm going to do the same on this side and be able to tie it closed with little ribbons coming down with this is my pretty decorative point right here. I can't believe how well this matches. This is perfect and I'm delighted to have this because this is so frou-frou and pretty. Oh my goodness. Let's talk next project. I need a lace and silk nightgown, something green and beautiful. And I'm going to use the same, same lace that is on this one so that I then can have this go with this, this go with this. And I also noticed this would go perfectly fine as well. I'm getting a vintage negligee set going. This is exciting. Okay, happy holidays everyone. Eat lots of dessert, drink your water, go be creative, avoid the fights that you can. And for everyone who's been here from the beginning and keeping track of those subscribers and the hours that I've, I'm getting, you're right. I'm getting really close to monetization with YouTube which is something that I never thought was actually going to happen. I never thought that this would actually be a popular concept to watch. And apparently it is. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to hit my thousand subscribers, but I actually do think it's in the next two weeks. So for everyone who has been here, who has watched everything, who's given me the hours, because it's not always about the subs, it's also about the hours watched. I want to say thank you. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for that support. It's really, really cool. Um, if you wish to support even more, please see the description for my Patreon link. I also include in every description almost all of the materials that I use and any of the websites that I go to. May your thread tension always be perfect. Have a wonderful week.